Hey guys, Chris here, lead trainer at Film Editing Pro. Today, we'll be talking all about the pros and cons of working with multicams versus merge clips in Premiere Pro. Premiere is a powerful editing tool, and one of its greatest strengths are its incredibly adaptable sequences, especially the multicam. Now, you might have no idea what a multicam is, and that's okay, because in this video, you're gonna learn all about what makes them so great and how they compare to the Merge Clips feature. Quick note, for a steady stream of new tutorials from professional Hollywood editors, be sure to subscribe to the Film Editing Pro channel and turn on notifications. Now, I'm gonna hand this off to Brian, one of the trainers here at Film Editing Pro. He's been editing professionally for 15 years, and he's gonna walk you through this lesson. All right, let's begin. First, you've been hearing this term multicam, but what are we even talking about? Well, when you have footage from one source, the camera for instance, and audio from another source, perhaps it's the audio recording device your sound recordist was using, you need a way to sync them up so that they stay connected while you are editing. Traditionally, you might think merge clips sounds like exactly what I'd want to do. But there's another, better way to do this, and that's to create a multicam. So let's break down the differences between these two options and figure out how they stack up against each other. The first important thing to know about multicams versus merged clips is the amount of footage and audio you can combine. With merged clips, you can combine one video source and as many audio sources as you want. This means if you were filming with one camera and multiple audio sources, such as a boom microphone, a lavalier, and the on-camera audio, you can combine all of that audio together with one source of video. But if you were filming with two or more cameras, such as working on a scene with many characters at once, or conducting an interview or filming a music performance, you would not be able to merge all of those video clips together. That's where multicams come in. Multicams can combine as many video and audio sources as you want. This is especially important if you want to use the powerful multicam camera switching tools in Premiere to pick the camera angle you want to view and even cut between them during live playback. For me, multicams win this category, and that's because not only can you use multicams to sync one source of footage and audio, it's also possible to actually adjust your multicam after you've created it. So the next item on our checklist is modifying the synced clips after you've created them. Once you create a merged clip, you are unable to modify it. It's basically like a brand new clip in your bin, and you can't change it. So if you accidentally made a mistake and maybe misaligned the audio and the video, or accidentally used the wrong track from the audio recording and want to swap it out, that won't be possible without actually recreating the entire merged clip. This can be especially problematic if you've already cut this clip into your sequence. Whereas multicams are essentially just nested sequences with some fancy settings. So once you make a multicam, you can choose to open in timeline, and this will allow you to see the contents of the multicam and modify them as needed. As someone who does a lot of syncing on projects I work on, and I should note that not all productions are created equal when it comes to being precise with recording audio and video, I need to have that kind of adaptability in my workflow to change things after the fact. This is especially true if you work on non-narrative projects where you might be discovering what video clips sync to which audio clips as you go along. And that brings me to my next point, and that's how metadata is preserved and used when you create merge clips or multicams. Now you may be asking, what do you mean by metadata? Well, let me show you. There are two key pieces of metadata that editors like and your color and sound vendors need for a successful collaboration. The first is tape name or real name. You may have seen this term here on the relinking offline media screen. This piece of metadata is great for helping software like Premiere and DaVinci Resolve successfully relink from transcoded media, like what you might edit with, to the full resolution camera masters that you might be using for color grading. The second piece of metadata is the iXML tags stored in your professionally recorded audio files. This information tells you what each track in your audio file is, and although Premiere unfortunately doesn't have a simple way to view this information in the timeline, Software like Pro Tools does, and sound mixers use that to help them sort and organize on their end. Now let's talk about how this pertains to merged clips and multicams. Well, merged clips effectively make brand new clips in your bin, and in doing so, Premiere strips out some of this information. Things like the iXML track names and the original audio file name are no longer available, so if you created an OMF or AAF file to do a turnover to your sound team, they wouldn't receive that information from the audio you have connected to your merged clips. 
There are workarounds to make this process work, however, I strongly suggest you skip merged clips altogether, because multicams will retain that important information for you all the way through your edit. Once you are done editing with multicams and are ready to send your sequence to the sound team, you can simply flatten your multicams, which will get rid of them in your timeline, and replace them with the original audio or original video that was inside of them. This makes doing turnovers to your sound team really easy because all of that metadata is going to come along with your files now. Multicams are the clear winner in this category, as they will preserve all of your important metadata and are completely non-destructive in your workflow. And that brings us to another very important editing tool, MatchFrame. MatchFrame is a vital tool in your editing arsenal. If you aren't using it right now, let me give you a very quick demonstration. In your timeline, hover your playhead over a clip. The default shortcut key for MatchFrame in Premiere is F. That will load the clip you are hovering over into the source monitor, but unlike simply double-clicking on the clip in the timeline to load it into the source, what happened is that Premiere went into the bin, found that source clip for you, and loaded it into the source monitor with the in and out points set to match what you have in your timeline. At this point, you can only imagine the power this tool provides. I use it about 500 times a day for various different purposes. Well, fortunately MatchFrame works great with both merged clips and multicams, but with caveats. When you use MatchFrame to load a merged clip into your source monitor, you have all of the same great tools at your disposal. You can cut this clip into your timeline, drag just the video or just the audio, and change in and out points. However, if you, for some reason, needed to get back to the original footage that was used to create that merged clip, you wouldn't be able to very easily. Multicams, however, can take MatchFrame one step further. Once you use MatchFrame to load the multicam into your source monitor, you can press MatchFrame a second time, and that will take you inside the multicam and load the actual video source into your source monitor. Now you are probably wondering, why would I ever want to do that? Well, it depends entirely on your workflow, but you might have a need to quickly find the bin of footage from that day of filming as you are hunting down a clip that you need. That's easy with multicams, because you can match frame from the timeline to the source, match frame from the multicam source to the original video source, and then right click and choose reveal in project. And voila, we're looking at the bin containing the original footage that was contained inside of the multicam, along with all of the other video clips from that day of filming. For me, I do this often when I need to export video files for VFX vendors, as I want to make sure I'm pulling from the original source footage to send out. So you can indeed use MatchFrame on both merged clips and on multicams. However, if you need even more functionality within Premiere, multicams will let you take MatchFrame one step further and reveal the actual source footage. This last one is actually going to be a tie. How do multicams work in your timeline compared to merged clips? Well, the good news is that they work just like any regular clip in your timeline. You can grab them and move them, you can unlink or link the audio from the video, you can scale and position them, apply effects, stack them, draw a little card with them, whatever you want to do. There is one finicky thing you should be aware of with multicams though. If you edit with a multicam in your timeline, and you should happen to unlink the audio from the video, Premiere can get a little bit confused about what those audio clips are, since they are technically still a multicam, but they are also just a nested sequence. So if you double click on audio that has been unlinked from its video, it'll take you inside the multicam timeline. For me, this isn't a big deal. You don't really ever need to double click on any clips in your Premiere timeline to bring up things like the effects controls. So if you've developed a no double clicking muscle memory, you probably won't ever run into this problem. So who wins the challenge? For me, multicams are the clear winner. I use them on almost every project and find that they offer me the kind of flexibility that I need to keep my projects organized and able to scale up as the project progresses. That's not to say you should never use merged clips. If you are an editor who is working by yourself in a vacuum and you don't plan to do any turnovers to sound, color, or VFX, then merged clips will probably work just fine for you. But if you are like me and are often collaborating with many different departments in post-production, you want to develop a workflow that doesn't remove important metadata from clips and allows you the most flexibility to adapt and change things as you go. Hey there, for tons more free editing training, head over to our website at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. Here you can download free editing guides along with high quality video training courses created by our team of professional Hollywood editors. Our tutorials cover a wide range of editing topics, like cutting awesome movie trailers, editing action scenes, how to work with music and sound design, and a lot more. 
All of these free guides and videos are available at filmeditingpro.com slash free training. I'll see you next time.